Hi everyone, this is Evo at Studio One on One, and you're looking at my setup when I'm in the studio. It is comprised at the moment of a touchscreen, 27 inch touchscreen, an iPad running the Pro Tools control app, a Apple trackpad, which I use mainly for navigation and um, gestures in Mac. I'm running on Windows at the moment, so those gestures don't work. Uh, a keyboard and a ter optical trackman um, trackball mouse. This is my current setup. I just added this Pro Tools Control app that is running on the iPad, and I do so because sometimes I'm on the road or I'm working at someone else's apartment, and I just don't have the large touchscreen available. Uh, I'll be working on my um, MacBook Pro, for instance, and I thought, okay, I can use the software that I use um, to execute macros and stuff without the touchscreen, which is called D-Touch. Um, <clears throat> but it would be nice to check out this uh, Pro Tools Control app, which is free. We have an old iPad lying about anyway, so I thought I'd give it a go. Now, my findings are very preliminary. Um, I've just been using it for a bit. I just want to get into why you would use touchscreens um, for music creation, um, the benefits of a large touchscreen as opposed to an iPad, perhaps. Um, when you're talking about Pro Tools, you also have the issue that um, the iPad app is made by Avid itself, which are the creators of Pro Tools, not the creators, but the um, producers of it currently. Um, and they use a protocol called Yukon, which allows for a much more in-depth control of Pro Tools than, for instance, Raven or D-Touch allows for. Um, that said, um, I've used both uh, Raven and D-Touch, and um, they pretty much both do whatever I want them to do. Uh, there are some slight drawbacks, but they don't hinder my workflow um, typically. Now that I'm using the iPad app, I notice there are some things that are quite handy on the iPad app, and I might end up using a setup like this, using the touchscreen with D-Touch running, and the iPad with Pro Tools Control running. Um, previously, this wasn't supported to use them together, but I've been using it for a few days now, and they seem to play quite nicely together. I'm going to sit down in the sweet spot and just talk about some things. Um, now you may notice that these, um, that my new videos are a bit more uh, amateuristic. Bear with me, I just don't have the time at the moment to make elaborate videos. So I either make no videos or I make um, sort of off the cuff ones. Um, and I figured that last option might be nicer because um, there's some things I want to talk about and there's not a lot of information on them. Uh, on YouTube, especially um, when it comes to using touchscreens um, for music production, which I think is the best bang for the buck, not only for the masses, but also for a lot of professionals, depending on your workflow, and I'll get into that uh, a bit later. So here I am at my um, workplace. Um, these faders work. Now, if you're using a touchscreen, um, I'm running on Windows 8.1 at the moment, so it supports multi-touch by default. But the problem is that Pro Tools does not. There are very few DAWs that do. Um, Studio One is one of them. Um, I think there's... Was it Sonar? I'm not sure. X1? Whatever. Um, Bitwig does. Bitwig is very good at it. Um, but Bitwig is more oriented towards um, electronic music production, and I'm more of an audio guy doing some electronic stuff as well. Um, I will be testing Bitwig in the future um, because it has a very interesting way of handling um, MIDI um, via touch and editing, uh, uh, editing as a whole via touch. So stay tuned for some um, uh, review I might do on that, or, um, you know, I'll be sure to share my findings. Now, because Pro Tools uh, by itself does not support um, multi-touch, uh, the only thing you can do uh, is a single touch fader. Now, for me, usually that's not really a problem. I 
don't use multi-touch faders that much. In fact, I don't use faders that much. Um, I never really did. Um, I like to automate some things and, you know, I set balance with faders, but when I'm in the studio, I'm not constantly with my fingers on the faders. It's not like I'm doing a live show, I use faders a lot, but um, in the studio, um, I'm more of a programmer and uh, that kind of stuff. Um, but if you want uh, a cheap way to have some multi-touch control of faders, um, you can uh, use the iPad here. Uh, okay, so maybe I should put it in a different orientation. I thought I'd put it like this, it's handy for you to see, but perhaps that's not the best way to do it. So um, you can do this. Um, why is this not working? Yeah, it's working now. I think I lost the connection. So this works. Um, the travel is quite small. I would like to see it a bit bigger, like you have the option to make them bigger. These are now like 60 millimeters faders, and if you're a pro, you prefer um, the long throw faders that you see on professional consoles. Um, so this is the first, let me make it a bit brighter here. Um, this is the first thing you'll see um, where the, the relative small size of the iPad um, is a bit of a limiting factor. Now, there's several things you can do on this app, and several things are, are quite powerful. Um, if you happen to have an iPad lying around, or you have one, um, the app is free, so use it by all means. If you are planning to purchase an iPad solely for this purpose, then I would suggest you get a, a large touchscreen instead, um, because they are similar in price. Uh, this one is about, I think, 500 bucks, um, excluding sales tax. So it might be like 600 bucks, but that's about the price of an iPad. And you get this glorious big touchscreen. Um, if you want to get a Raven MTI 2, they're a bit more expensive. They're uh, 1200 or something. Um, and you get the, uh, the Raven software included, of course. In my case, I got this for about 500 bucks and the Detouch software for about 200 bucks. Now, I'm not running the Detouch software at the moment. I just wanted to show you um, what you can do out of the box. Um, if you're on Mac, you cannot do anything out of the box because the touchscreen will just simply, simply not work well on Mac. So Apple, get your heads out of your ass and at least offer some basic support for touchscreens because not everyone using uh, Macintosh or not everyone using Mac OS is on a tiny laptop. There are people who want to use uh, large touchscreens connected to their laptops, connected to their Mac Pros, connected to their iMacs, whatever, connected to their Mac Minis. Um, they want to live in this age. So while you sort out how you're going to implement multi-touch in your OS, um, please do not hinder us professionals. You are hindering us, okay? This is one of the reasons why I'm currently running on Windows instead of Macintosh. Uh, sorry, Mac OS. Now that I got that off my chest, what you can do here is single touch things. That's it. Um, for most things, that's fine. It's not a problem. Um, but you'll find, you know, some things will work, some things won't work. You can, you can do quite a lot of editing with this. It's really not that much of a problem. Um, if you want multi-touch and you have an iPad, hey, go for it. It doesn't do the nifty things that D-Touch does, but it does do multi-touch. See, is it two mutes at the same time? I missed it there. You know, you can grab two faders at the same time. It's quite responsive. It's quite cool. Awesome. Now, on the app you have another function here, which is the tracks functions. It's kind of a, um, I don't know what they call it. It's like, uh, well, I forgot the name for it. You can have a lot of tracks shown and you can mute them, input select, solo, things like that. Then there's the channel um, view. 
So let's go, let's go to a channel here, this guide local channel. I'll activate some uh, plugins. This one too, and this one. And then let's see what's going on here. You have, if you push the inserts tab, you see, okay, you have this trim one, but it's, it has a little um, at symbol there. It means that it's not um, actually active. Okay, let's go to this one. It opens it, and then I can mess around, as you can see on the screen, I can mess around with the parameters. So let's do this here, boom. So this is multi-touch enabled. That's cool. Because Windows supports multi-touch, you should be able to do this, but you can't because Avid have not actually implemented multi-touch in their plugins. Um, now there are a few um, there are a few uh, manufacturers that have, for instance, Waves, which is probably because um, they have their multi-touch live console now. Um, so pretty much all of the um, here, let's take something whatever, just a simple. One. Pretty much all of the Waves plugins are now multi-touchable. They don't make a big deal out of it, I guess, because it's maybe sort of in beta phase or whatever. Um, but it works, um, and if you're so inclined, um, it's rather nice to be able to do it. I don't find myself using it a lot, but it's nice that it's there. There's also some other plugins that um, do it, that work. I will make a video at some point um, identifying them, at least the ones I have, and um, sharing my findings. Uh, but so for now, um, for most plugins, um, if you want some multi-touch control, um, the app is a good way of doing so. Um, so there. So you can go. You can even set the input, which is now to set to something. I don't know what the hell this is. How do I set this? Oh no, I really don't like this. You can sort of toggle between things. No. Okay, so you can set the input. You can set the output. You can go to dynamics. You know, likewise, you can you can mess around with that stuff. Got an EQ here. Actually, I want a different EQ. Um, this is annoying because it it only it only it does. I have two EQs um, active here, and it doesn't toggle between them. It goes to the high pass filter, so that's a bit annoying. So I go to inserts, closes, inserts here. Now it works. So yeah, so here you can do this. Here's my issue with this approach. I'm not a fan of using any sort of external controller to uh, manipulate the controls that I'm staring at right in front of me. Um, personally, I prefer single touch use uh, of, the, of the graphical interface I'm looking at over this. And it doesn't matter to me much whether it's a hardware with actual knobs. I mean, I like the feel of hardware knobs and faders as much as anyone. Um, but to me, um, using an external box to control something I'm staring at on screen is just ultimately, ultimately a fool's errand. In my mind, it's an unnecessary extra step. And if you can eliminate it, then by all means. And if you are one of those persons who need faders or need hardware control because you just cannot, for some reason, do this, touch glass, you can buy a hardware controller and you'll be stuck with doing this sort of extra step kind of thing. Now, had they been able to get the actual plug-in graphical interface on here so that it, this would look identical, I would have been more okay with that. But because this is a, this is a relatively small screen, um, they cannot do that. So they're going with this sort of approach they've always been going with, which is this quite boring array of parameters that you can then, sliders and such, that you can then manipulate. That is a big, big drawback for me. I will not be using this much. Let's go to the soft keys tab, because that's where it gets interesting. 
And I'll compare this to uh, what I have already have going on with Dtouch. Now this is one of the, the, the aspects of using touchscreens um, that will really speed up your workflow and will make it easier. Pro Tools, like any other DAW, is riddled with keystroke combinations that if you remember them well, you can, you can be flying through the DAW by just using all these keystrokes and your mouse and whatever, you can be super quick. There's no, no, no question about that. Um, personally, I tend to sort of confuse a few of them. And sometimes when I'm not working on Pro Tools a lot, I forget which one was which, and um, I constantly need to be thinking. If I use it day in, day out as an editor, uh, you know, it, it will be all in my head and it'll be like second nature, no problem. Uh, it's not my reality. I have so many different tasks that I do. Um, it's not just operating uh, Pro Tools. So for me, it is very handy to be able to just have a button for these keystrokes. You can just program whatever, you, whatever functions you use a lot and maybe tend to forget um, uh, the shortcut to program them onto a button. Now, with this app, they've already done this for you. Um, shitloads of it. With Dtouch, I sort of um, started from scratch. There are, you know, the, the most used functions are on there, but the rest you can do yourself, which is something I like. So let me show you what Dtouch is all about. Dtouch is an application made by Devil Technologies in Italy. And they do something similar to um, what Slate does with Raven, only um, the difference is that um, they don't require you to buy a proprietary um, touchscreen. It's not that Slate makes touchscreens, but he sort of makes a full product and, and tweaks, it says he tweaks the, the drivers and such so, so that they are optimized. Um, that's, that's all fine but it comes with a higher price tag. Uh, and if you want to buy another one, um, you pretty much buy the whole thing again uh, if you want to expand. Now, whereas with, um, with Dtouch, you buy the software and you can use it on one or two uh, or whatever touch screens you like. Um, they only have like, uh, they have uh, uh, some restrictions on um, uh, the, the resolution of the screen, which has to be 1080p at the moment or higher, um, but most screens are most touchscreens are 1080p, so that's really not an issue. So if you buy a touchscreen and then, for instance, I buy a second one, a larger one, that will just cost me the the, the price of that extra touchscreen. It will not. Um, I will not have to buy a whole new Raven for that premium price, uh, like is the case with Slate. So there's multiple reasons why I went for. Um, Dtouch as opposed to going for uh, Raven. Um, they're both good products. Um, I'm happy with my choice um, and I'll show you what it can do. So yeah, you, first you have this little pop-up window. You have to start some MIDI ports because that's how it communicates with uh, Pro Tools to enable these multi-touch faders uh, and such. And then you have to run it and it will um, open your uh, it will open up your uh, Pro Tools and it will align things so that um, the experience is sort of seamless. It is not, but it appears to be, which is good. Um, so here are your Pro Tools faders. Um, this bar here is part of Dtouch. And you can see that when I press this button called Show, Dtouch overlays different faders over the Pro Tools interface and it does it in such a way that you don't, you really don't see um, the difference between them anymore, which is good. See, I mean they're different, but um, you get used to that very quickly, um, and it, it seems quite seamless. So that's good. What this allows you to do is um, do things like this, um, which is um, with a swipe gesture, a mute several things. Uh, it allows you to uh, directly control um, faders with multi-touch, um, which is good. You can do this, for instance, which is a button I put there 
to put everything at zero, which is what I like to do. Um, you can do the same thing with um, selecting multiple things, for instance. Um, that's quite nice. So there you go. Now here you have your transport and some other functions um, that are pre-programmed. Actually, this part from here to there is pre-programmed. You can use um, modifiers. Um, as opposed to the way modifiers on your keyboard works, modifiers are shift, control, alt, option, command, that kind of stuff. Um, the windows key. Um, in Dtouch, it latches them, which means you can use it for several things at once, and then you press it again to unlatch it. Um, that's quite handy. As you can see, with only the Pro Tools faders visible, this is not possible, these kind of things. So, this is handy. Let's show these faders again. Now, this, this bit here is where it gets interesting for me, because um, this is where you can uh, program things to your liking. You can either populate them with uh, buttons, which are sort of single push buttons, or you can populate them with folders that pop up somewhere. Um, you can also have multiple things going. You can so you have multiple panes of this. I didn't get any farther than three, but so far I've got this going on. I also have some general utilities, for instance, to import audio, import data, import video, import MIDI. These are um, key combinations that I um, tend to mix up because they're very, very similar. Import audio is Control Shift I. Import MIDI is Control Alt I. Import video is Control Alt Shift I, and you understand why I messed these things up. And it's much nicer to just have it on a button. These are very handy things. I like to have multiple plugins open at the same time, but of course, when you have everything on one screen, they will at some point get in the way of your faders or your solo buttons or whatever that will get in the way. So this is kind of unhandy. Let's see, let's put this one here and then here, tidy it up a bit. Still, it's a bit unhandy. Uh, there is a keystroke to handle this. It's Control, Alt, Command, W. It's high, show and hide all floating windows. That's great, uh, but I just made a button for it and it does the same thing. So for anything you use a lot, it's worth it to create a button like this. Um, on the iPad app, um, they have similar things. Um, there's one more thing I wanted to mention about the advantage to having a large touchscreen as opposed to uh, just an iPad, is that on the iPad, you can control eight, sort of nine, but not really. You can control eight faders at a time. And if you buy a hardware controller, it's probably the same thing. Uh, most of them are eight faders. Um, and they're already quite expensive. Like if you want a good hardware controller, with eight faders, they're often 500 euros or more. You can get them cheaper, but they're a few hundred bucks. Now, on this iPad, if you have an iPad lying around, you can have it for free, basically. That's cool, but it is just eight faders. And if you want to bank, you can but it's only eight. So eh, in big sessions, not very handy. Now let's see what Dtouch gives you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I knew that, but it's nice. It has 22 faders on screen. You can work on them directly. I usually don't have even 21 faders on screen because I use these screen sets, sets so much, which I prefer because then I have some screen real estate to leave some plugins open, for instance, and I just use um, this kind of workflow to navigate through my very large sessions. Awesome. Okay, so let's go to the edit window here. Um, as you see, when you go to edit, you have a, a larger um, surface to work on. That is, the toolbar of Dtouch uh, takes uh, a, a bit more space than in the mixer. Um, it's not as much as in Raven, 
um, which is one of the things I don't really like much about Raven is it takes much more of your screen real estate because they insist on having these sort of um, hardware-like uh, buttons or you know graphical interface buttons that kind of look like hardware. Um, they're quite big. Um, they look nifty, but um, practically, I think the approach that Devil Technologies have taken um, makes a bit more sense. Um, they don't go for the wow factor. They just go for um, functional um, and leave as much space as possible for your actual DAW software. Um, and I happen to prefer that. See, this is very lean. Uh, basically, it looks like I'm controlling Pro Tools, not uh, Raven. Um, so there, that's a bit less obtrusive, I think. So here it's the same thing. You can have these multiple things going on. For instance, here I have my marker set up. Now, there's no markers set up yet. So what I'm going to do is play and set some bullshit markers up. So now I have some markers set up. And you see that here the markers are still called what they're called. Um, and this is because Dtouch uses, it, it would be possible to do this, but uh, let's, let's suppose Dtouch can only use the Huey control protocol. Now that's a very basic sort of MIDI protocol um, that external controllers are, um, are supposed to use to control Pro Tools. The Yukon protocol that is much more uh, advanced is not something other uh, controller manufacturers can use to control Pro Tools. Um, other DAWs can build that in so that Pro Tools controllers can use other DAWs in a very um, advanced way, but Pro Tools cannot be controlled by other controllers than Avid's own by any other protocol than Huey. And Huey is old and very basic. One of these downsides is that, for instance, you cannot, um, you can um, recall something, uh, but you cannot, uh, the program cannot know what the actual name of these markers are. So you're stuck with, uh, well, one for me is always top, so I call it top, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. Now, if we go to the iPad app here, and we go to memory locations, you'll see, hey, here, it gets updated automatically. That's really cool. If I add one, let's see. If I add one here, let's call it add. You'll see here that, bam, it gets updated quite quickly, quite swiftly. You can navigate to all of these things. That's very good. You can actually create markers and things like that. It's all good. So it's quite handy to have both for me. Another reason for um, having all of these controls down at the bottom here is that this DAW was created with a mouse in mind, so a lot of the, the functions are at the top of the screen. Um, as you can imagine, you don't want to be operating things at the top of the screen all the time. It's just needlessly tiring. So what Dtouch does is put a lot of those uh, buttons at the bottom. There are some things that are missing. You can program your own favorites. You can populate them here wherever you want. You can make these sort of these things. This is just a, a test. I thought maybe it's handy to have like a vertical one here. Let me show you some simple editing features. Okay, so I recorded some audio. That's good. It can be a bit louder here. So I'm using, as you can see, I'm using that clip gain slider to make it a bit louder. So I got some audio. So what can you do? Um, if you use the top here, you see a fade out appears, you can drag it to wherever you like, that's good. And then you can even adjust the curve. These sort of quick crossfades um, are quite handy. I like the fact that you can sort of wiggle, <laughs> wiggle it into the right um, size, then you can still move it. So this editing works quite well actually. Um, I'm going to do one more thing, because I do use touch quite a lot to compose. Okay, so editing MIDI. Let's see, I want a note here, a note here, a note here. Okay, so what can we do now? We can lengthen these notes. 
Yeah, that's good. So there, you can copy them by holding Alt or by using this. And you can sort of use this lasso tool to select them. Say, say this is a chord um, and you want to copy that chord to the next section here. You do this, boom, and there. Let's say this is a fantastically musical passage. Then here you go. Quite cool. Quite nice. Say so you have the mod wheel controller here. You can probably draw something in. Where is it? Oh yeah, you could take this. Oop. Let's see, that's what you want to do. No, let's do it like this. Or no. Hey, let's have a looping. That doesn't work, obviously. I'm kidding. But it's quite handy. That is pretty awesome. I don't personally like to record fader rides and things like that. I like this. There's a little trick and you raise it. And what happens? Oh lordy. Oh lordy. It does this. Isn't that beautiful? And if you want to modify that, uh -huh, hit Alt again. And you modify it. It's pretty nifty, isn't it? I happen to rather like it. Well, that's it for now. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Later. If you like this video and want to see more of them, please subscribe below. If you have any specific questions you need answers to, please follow the link in the description to learn more about Studio One-on-One -on -one online teaching sessions.